Hi and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm going to show you a cool way to make some under ice effects. Want to see how it's done? Stay tuned and let's check it out. To create the ditches in the ice, you're going to want to get a hold of 100% acetone nail polish remover, then using a Q-tip, put this onto the foam and let it start eating away at the foam. This is also something I do recommend you play around with on a spare piece of foam if you have not done this technique before. A little will go a very long way. Now it's good to keep in mind as you're creating these ditches that you want to consider how deep you really want them to be for the items you're going to hide under the ice. So again, play around with it, see how it works. You can also go back in with a paintbrush and sort of feather things around, but just be sure that you check as it goes along, otherwise it might eat through the bottom of the foam and you don't wanna do that. Once you've reached your desired depth, let it be and let that acetone dry off before you do anything else with the foam. Now I thought it'd be fun to put a skeleton under ice, so basically I just took a skeleton from a cheap pack that I got off of Amazon and cut it into pieces. I focused more on the skull and the torso area of the skeleton to have that submerged under ice. And again, don't go for a high quality mini in this case, you wanna make sure they're cheap. And it does help to sort of test fit to see if you do need to go back in and make any adjustments by either snipping the miniature or possibly going back with a little bit more acetone to eat away towards the sides of your ditch, that type of a setup. Once you have it established as you'd like, then we'll look into taking care of making sure the skeleton gets a good seal with the Mod Podge Ultra. I found that this helps the paint adhere to these cheap skeletons better. If you haven't seen a handheld wire cutter for foam used in action yet, I do recommend you check out the video that is linked above. But at this point, make sure you've taken your foam and you use that hot wire cutter to cut the edges and add details to your foam pieces. Because I only had pink foam on hand for this project, I did need to make sure that I muted this foam's pink out of the equation so it didn't affect the colors in the ice. This means I did a mix of Mod Podge gloss with pewter gray and a touch of Midnight Dream. Once you mix all three together, you get this richer gray blue, which helped cancel out the warm tones of the pink. I will say, if you can get a hold of the home insulation foam, that's that nice greenish blue color, use that over the pink. It makes things a lot easier in this process for any type of ice scatter in this case. Now with your mix, you're gonna go in with a paintbrush and basically just paint your foam. Make sure you get into those nooks and crannies of your ditches, as well as around the sides and edges. Another thing I wanna mention here is that before painting, I did take a wire brush and just drag it across the top just to give the surface a little bit more texture. But once you get everything completely covered with this mixture, do be sure to let it dry overnight to make sure it's functioning dry and has created a nice seal for you with your foam. Starting with graphite gray from Craftsmart, you're gonna take this and basically just paint this onto the skeleton. Do not get concerned about full coverage and making sure everything is perfect. This is going to be muted down and hidden essentially under the ice. So we're not looking for perfection, we're looking to nods of color. Once that's dry, move over to khaki and you're going to do a dry brush over it just to bring out the bones a little bit more. Essentially, you're making the skeleton look aged and old and exposed to the elements. Once you've done that, you're then going to move on to using this metallic dark gray silver and I did it to paint the shield as well as the headpiece that ended up being on this skeleton. That's completely optional if you want to add that detail to the skeleton. Again, this is something that's going to be hidden under ice. We want more of the effects of a skeleton under ice than a mini ready for show. Finally, I did a black wash and let that dry. 
Starting first with the granite gray, you're going to go back to your foam pieces and with a cosmetic wedge that's been prepped for sponging, you're going to dab this all across your piece. Now the thing I like about these cosmetic wedges is that they help with blending and they also give a finer appearance, especially if you rip up the bottom portion of this. So make sure you get this layer on, let it dry a little bit, and the other great thing about the wedges is that you can drag them across your edges and it acts as a quick way to highlight the details that you've put into the edges of your terrain pieces. Once that colors dry, you are going to want to make sure that you move into Tahiti Blue and you're going to do the same thing with a brush. The other thing I did do on the top is start dragging it just a little bit, again to enhance the blending of these paints together. Don't forget, get your top, get your edges, and do make sure you paint inside your ditch as well. Finally, we're going to make sure this dries before moving on to the last step because you don't want to muddy this up too much. What you're going to do once your Tahiti Blue is dry, you're going to move over to using just plain white. I did move over to a paintbrush for this factor because I wanted to make sure there was a little bit more coverage than what the foam wedge could do. So using a wide paintbrush, I used that to apply the white to the edges in a dry brush fashion, as well as into the ditch and then across the top. Now when you drag it across the top, this is where you're also going to see those details that I put in with the wire brush ahead of time. If you want to do that, that's great. That's a step you could skip if you so choose. I just like the way it kind of gives it more of that windswept, rugged terrain that you can find in icy areas. To give these pieces an icy sheen, I use the Deco Art Pearlizing Agent, and this is fantastic. It's basically dry brushing again. I used a smaller brush in this case because I don't want it covering everything. I just wanted to highlight those edges so that when you move the piece around, you do get the shine. Now, when it came to the top surface of the terrain, I did go back to the wider brush just because it made it easier to cover it a lot faster. But as you can see, it now has a gloss to it. At this point, we're going to start putting the skeleton into the ditch in your ice. And to do this, take your low temp hot glue gun and put some hot glue in the bottom to secure your skeleton in place. Now keep in mind, the deeper you put the skeleton, the more hidden it will be in the long run once the hot glue goes over it. Now the reason why I'm saying a low temp hot glue gun is because the high temp hot glue guns can have a bad habit of melting the foam further. I will say though, if you have that green blue insulation foam, you could play around and use that to your advantage. So at this point I've put the skeleton in, now I'm putting the shield on top, and essentially it's just a matter of going back in and putting some more hot glue around it. Of course make sure you, it's secure before you do anything else but now I'm taking the hot glue and I'm edging it around and I'm filling it into the spots where I want this to get covered and that way it just begins to immerse your skeleton in what's going to be layers of ice. Now a little trick I did to kind of help keep the surface more smooth is I'd put the hot glue in and once I got the area covered, I would then tap it onto my hand and this process would make the glue level out a little bit more just to kind of keep it from looking too ridged and waved from the lines of your hot glue gun. I thought it would also be fun to give a treasure under ice look as well. So for this, I just used some random rhinestones and little ac accessories that you can find in the jewelry section of any craft store and just started putting them into the ice. And then this, I did do layers. So basically I put some hot glue down, then put some rhinestones on top, let that glue cool a little bit. And then I did another layer of the hot glue and put some more of the rhinestones into that layer of the ice. So it created this layering effect of the rhinestones being throughout the entire chunk of ice as opposed to it all being at the very bottom. So this is another little twist you can do with the under ice effects by giving you a treasure hoard in ice as opposed to a body in ice. And the same tricks as before, put the glue on top. If you want to smooth it out a little bit more, tap it on top of your hand and you'll end up with something that looks like this. And here we have our final look of the skeleton in ice as well as the treasure in ice. This is a concept I wanted to share with you because I thought it'd be a fun and easy way for you to create these situations in your games as well with supplies you have readily at hand. You can also have fun with playing around as to what exactly is going to go underneath those layers of ice. You could have someone who's completely frozen under ice. You could have, like we showed before, the skeleton, the treasure. Your imagination is unlimited in this situation. So I hope this is a 
tip that's come in handy for you. If you have any questions, as always, you can email me at thecraftingmuse.email at gmail.com or comment below. If you've liked this video, do be sure to give it a thumbs up. And while you're here, you are welcome to subscribe. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you later with another craft video soon. A big welcome to channel champions, Chameleon Fam, and Silent Adel. Thank you so much for joining my Patreon community. If you too would like to become a member and get access to my Discord server, make sure to check out my Patreon link below in the description. Thank you very much again, guys, and I'll see you later. Stand in frame. Standing in frame is important. You're not standing in frame. What good are you? Testing microphone. I almost seem too... Hmm. I look like I like went Oompa Loompa mode. I, have to, I might have to take the light filter off. Yep, I think I look Oompa Loompa. Oompa Loompa. Hi, and well, well, I'm in the hall. Hey, one take. Once I got the lighting pulled together, one take. No! Easy a happy day.